Okay, today we're going to introduce you to an idea called the probability generating functions, or PGFs for short. So consider a simple probability distribution of tossing two coins and the number of heads obtained. Well, I could, I could have a coin be a tail and a tail, which would be I would have zero heads, and the probability of that happening is one quarter. I could have a head and a tail, a tail and a head, which would be a one head, which is a probability of one half. And I could have two heads, head, head, which is again a probability of one quarter. And we've done these in the past a lot. Okay. However, this one, this t to the power x, means I'm going to make up this dummy variable t, and I'm going to raise it to this x. So it's t to the zero, t to the one, and then t to the 2. And I want to find this thing called the, the expectation of t to the x. Well, expectation means I take this value and I multiply it by the probability. So I'm going to go the probability, 1 quarter, times t to the 0, plus 1 half times t to the 1, plus 1 quarter, times t squared. And we know that, that is 1, so I can just write it as such. And this expectation of t to the x is what a probability generating function is. This is g of t, where t is really just a placeholder of the outcomes of probability of your random variable. And so g of t is simply 1 quarter plus half t plus 1 quarter t squared. This means the outcome was 2, the outcome was 1, and the outcome was 0. And so I'm going to take this here, and let's use it on the next page, because it refers to it. Here's my outcome. And next thing it says, determine g at 1. Well, if I take g at 1, I get a quarter plus 1 half times 1 plus 1 quarter, which equals 1. And this is always true about probability generating functions. g at 1 is always equal to 1 because a generating function, by definition, writes all the probabilities, all the possibilities that are possible. It just writes them as a function with this dummy variable t. So g at 1 is always 1. That is always true about these functions. Now, it now says find the second derivative, which is kind of interesting because now I'm doing probability and I'm taking derivatives. So I'm going to take the second derivative of this. So g prime at t, that goes away, ends up being 1 half plus 1 over 2 t, g double prime at t, equal to simply 1 half. Now, I want to find the probability that x equals 2. Well, if I think about this is the probability of x equaling 2, and I get that from my table here, right? I've got 1 quarter. And I took the derivative twice, so this 2 came down, and then it came down a second time. And so the fact that the 2 came down to here, to make it 2 times a quarter, is how I got 1 half. And so this is not the probability. What is the probability? Well, I'm gonna, I want 1 over 2, this is divided by 2, undoing that 2 times that will be 1 quarter. That's going to be true. To generalize and think about if I'm going to find the probability when x equals n, well, what I did is I took the second derivative, I pulled it down once, I have to counteract that, and so I'm going to, but if I do many derivatives, I'm going to counteract all of them, and so it's going to be over n factorial times the generating function, function of that derivative but all the other values I want to be 0, so I find it at 0. And this is a generalization to, to use the probability generating functions t 
to calculate various probabilities. So here is your introduction to probability generating functions and a couple ideas that you need to know.